Hello, welcome to the Sunday Driver channel. This is my review of a Toyota GT86. I recently had a chance to drive this vehicle for five days, over 1,300 kilometers through three countries, uh, starting in Germany, Austria, Italy, and back into Germany, uh, through the Alps, mostly. Um, I wanted to share my impressions with you, for those of you who are interested in buying this car, because I think you're going to get a lot more information in driving it in the manner I did, rather than just taking it for a test drive at the dealership. So a little bit about the Sunday Driver. Um, I used to own a 2004 Mazda Speed MX-5, and I've done uh, some advanced driver training, uh, racing schools, track days, etc. Let's talk about the good of a GT86. First big point is it's rear wheel drive, and that's proper wheel drive. Forget about front wheel drive. You know, jury's still out, maybe an all wheel drive, but front wheel drive, forget about it, that's out. If you want a sports car, you want rear wheel drive, and the GT86 does not fail us. Another good thing is the seat and seating position, with one exception. The seat's very good, it's actually a real highlight of the car. Nice big bolsters. Uh, holds you in nice uh, when you're cornering. By that having been said, I spent five, seven, eight hours in the car a day and I had no problem with the sore back or anything. The seat was very supportive. Seating position is excellent. I like to sit upright and this car allowed me to do that. Telescopic steering wheel in the right spot. Uh, lots of headroom, even sitting upright. So uh, very good. Headroom, uh, you might have a problem if you're wearing a helmet. You might have to tilt the seat back a bit, but uh, no helmet, uh, there's no problem with the headroom. Uh, another nice get thing about this car was the balance, or the ability to transition from understeer to oversteer with a throttle. I took the car around the skid pad. Okay, well, maybe it wasn't a skid pad, maybe it was, uh, you know, what do you call them, those European traffic circles, but in any case, as I'm going around, I'm able to steer with the throttle transition from understeer to oversteer now the problem was you got to be in the proper gear for that as I'm going around fairly tight uh, skid pad if I was in second you don't really have the ability to transition as much because you don't have that much you know engine power uh, first in first gear it was nice I'm really able to uh, work the engine change the balance of the car Another nice thing was the visibility. Uh, some people have complained about it on the internet. I did not have that problem at all. Um, big side mirrors, nice big uh, side windows. So spotting traffic was never a problem. You know, not even on the Autobahn, you know, these guys, they come screaming up at you at 300 kilometer an hour. Well, no problem in this car. You could see everybody coming. The highlight of the car is the chassis. The chassis engineer deserve a lot of credit. This car is more Porsche Cayman than any Toyota has a right to be. Um, now on to a few trouble areas. Let's look at the engine, gearbox and steering. What's wrong with the engine? Well, nothing that much is wrong with the engine. It makes a fair bit of power as long as you keep it on boil. So I'm talking about keeping it above 4000 RPM. But I got a few issues with the sound coming out of it. If you're below 2000 RPM, at times the engine is going to sound like a diesel, you're going to get that rattle. It's no good in a sports car. If you go above 5000 RPM where you should be, um, it's going to sound a little labored. It's not going to be music to your ears. Now, one issue I take with a 200 horsepower engine and the chassis combined is, uh, is the ability to produce oversteer. Now uh, we've all seen the Chris Harris's of the YouTube, all the reviewers driving around on the track 200 mile an hour, going into corners, totally crossed up, counter steer in, big drift monster style. Well, we all want to do that. I want to do that, but uh, you know, I want to do it on the street and I want to do it somewhat safely. And with 200 horsepower, there's just not enough, uh, you don't have enough power even with these uh, Prius Eco tires to break the rear end loose consistently. Unless you're on a wet road or you're on a snowy road. But you know, normal dry road, unless you're using up a lot of your traction allowance on the cornering, you don't have enough horsepower to break it loose. So if you want to drift it, you're going to have to go into the corner pretty hot. Um, and then get on the gas and get the tail end out. See for me, 
you know, being a Sunday driver and all, I'm, ta I'm looking, I'm talking about safety. What I want to do, I want to go in at a more reasonable speed. And then you get on the power and use the use the horsepower to break the rear end loose, get a little wiggle action, you know. I think that's a lot safer. So this car is gonna push you. If, if you wanna if you wanna have some fun with it, the car is gonna tell you you need to go faster. You need to go faster. Use up a lot of that. Use up a lot of your traction on cornering, and then and then then you're able to break the rear end loose. Um, and that's for me a problem. Onto the gearbox. Now the shifter feels pretty good. Uh, can't complain much. It, it makes me feel like a rally driver for some reason. There's just something very nice about it, especially gears one through four. Um, five to six, I didn't enjoy as much. It seemed to be a little harder to get into gear, uh, but one to four uh, felt pretty good. Now the problem I got though with the shift, uh, with the gearbox, uh, the gear ratios, uh, it seemed too high. Uh, so what I'm talking about is uh, first gear, uh, you're gonna redline top out at 59 kilometers per hour. Second gear, you're gonna top out at 97 kilometers per hour, uh, which was kind of handy actually, because one of the roads I was driving, the speed limit was 100, so I knew as long as I wasn't topping out in a second, hey, I'm under the speed limit, you know? Because that's what Sunny Driver's all about, we're keeping it safe and we're keeping it legal. Uh, yeah, so, um, I, I just don't understand where we're coming with the gear ratios. Uh, is there any reason I really need to reach 100 km an hour in second gear? You know, it might be great if you're doing a 0 to 100 km acceleration run, only two, only one shift, but I question it when I'm accelerating out of hairpin corners in the Alps, or maybe even driving around town, right? You know, you're slowing down for a corner, uh, 90 degree right, or, you know, 90 degree left, and you go down into second, and you want to get a little power down, you want to put a little power down, get a little wiggle or whatever, feel a little something coming out, and you fall flat on your face because the car is out of a power band, you know. Um, so what I had to do is, if you watch my videos, you'll see I start, I'm downshifting into first, going into the hairpins, just so I'm in the power band coming out. Now, uh, you got to be good at the heel-toe, you know, rep matching downshift if you're going to go into first. I'm not. So uh, it was a bit of a chore for me. It did, uh, did not make it very uh, fun going into corners. Sports car for me is all about the steering. And the GT86 gets a lot of things right, but it gets one thing very, very wrong. Now, what's nice about the steering wheel? The size is good. It's nicely lever wrapped. And the car responds nicely to your inputs. However, there is no feedback coming out of the steering wheel. I compare it to driving a video game with the force feedback turned off. So if you want to know how hard you're cornering, how hard your front wheels are working, don't look to the steering wheel for that information. It's just not there. It, it feels very dead. And that's a problem for me. If I'm driving on a nice windy road, um, I want to, I want the car, I want to communicate with the road. And I feel like the, electric, the new electric steering that the GT86 uses is just way, way too numb. I'm not getting any sensations back. Let's talk, let's wrap up a couple of small points about the car. Let's talk about the GPS slash nav unit. Uh, it does traffic and it was rerouting me. If there's a problem on the highway, even an uh, hour ahead, it'll try to reroute you to get you to your destination the quickest. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, the bad, it's slow to boot up. Uh, when you start the car, you're gonna wait a bit for your GPS to come on, and it's slow calculating directions. The interface is cumbersome, it's slow to program. So any car you're buying, I suggest you uh, sit in the dealer parking lot and fiddle around with GPS, program in some of your usual uh, waypoints and, um, and see how you like the interface. For me, it was, uh, it was a bit lacking. Uh, another point is about the door lock, and I don't know what it is about the Japanese cars, but if I'm driving around with the door locked uh, and I want to open it, I just want to pull on the handle and have, in one motion of the handle, have the door unlock and open. That's what I want, because if, if I'm pulling on the handle, it means I want to get out. With this car, if the door is locked, it actually takes two motions of a handle to open the door. 
one one handle pull to unlock second handle pull to open the door i know it's a small thing that's my uh you know obsessive compulsive uh, coming out there but uh anyways it was bugging me a little bit it's time to wrap up the review you've heard enough out of a sunday driver well should you buy this car well it depends who you are if you're looking for a second car you're looking for a weekend car a, a fun car you got money to burn and you're trying to save a little bit by buying this gt86 uh don't this car is not going to satisfy you it's going to let you down it's not enough of an occasion when you drive it you don't get the good noises you don't get the steering feedback uh it's just it's i don't think i don't think you're going to enjoy it on the winding roads you're not going to enjoy it in the canyons the one way you might enjoy this as a second car is if you're a real track rat you like to go out on the track you like to push it yeah this car is going to be okay because it's got a great chassis so that's going to work out for you other than that uh, if you if you just if you're a road driver no, i don't think this car is for you now if you're in a limited budget or a you know stricter budget and you're looking for one car for all your driving needs i'd say yeah give this car some serious consideration especially if you're cross shopping some front wheel drive cars as we talked about rear wheel drive is always better than front wheel drive so um, yeah if this is going to be your only car I'd say go for it, go test it out, see how it fits you, see if you have that right knee problem hitting the console. Um, if you're worried about the winter time, don't worry about it. Just buy some winter tires, slap them on and I think you're going to get to go. I mean, yeah, you're going to have a little bit lower ride height and maybe get a high centered, but other than that, I think she's going to be okay in the winter. The traction stability control is very, comes on uh, very uh, early and uh, it's gonna keep you out of trouble in the winter time the only thing you gotta remember if you do buy this car you gotta wind it out you gotta go for your red line on a regular basis anyways hope you enjoyed the sunday driver review of a gt86 talk to you later